Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming. I'm Nick Dasadovich, Director of Data Center Marketing at uh, Xilinx. Today, we're going to be talking about Alveo Adaptable Acceleration Solutions for the Data Center. So let's start with a quick overview of Data Center Dynamics. Um, and when we talk about Data Center here, we're talking about the spectrum from hyperscalers to tier two cloud service providers, telco, NFV, uh, as well as private cloud. And uh, when we talk about these workloads, uh, we're really talking about how do they impact the servers, the cloud servers in the data center. Uh, people traditionally think of cloud servers as performing compute functions, and of course that's true, but what one thing that's uh, sometimes overlooked is that there are a lot of workloads associated with uh, networking as well as storage in these servers, and those need to be accounted for. Uh, so you can see some of the workloads here. Uh, on the compute side, uh, you know, everybody's aware, of course, of the tremendous amount of growth in compute applications like machine learning, uh, video transcoding, big data analytics, database, high performance computing, and so on. Um, what I want to highlight here is that there's also a big growth in workloads associated with storage and networking. So if we look at uh, networking, uh, we, with the rise of SDN and uh, the virtual switching functionality, uh, more security uh, being driven into servers, uh, the workloads uh, associated with networking are taking up more and more CPU cycles. Uh, similarly with storage, uh, we see that uh, uh, locally attached storage or remote attached storage through NVMe uh, also drives workloads into the server. Uh, you know, you have drivers that need to move storage, you have storage stacks, and so on. And this is all uh, taking up CPU resources in terms of instruction cycles and also in terms of memory bandwidth. Um, so what can we do about this? Uh, an approach that I think is commonly accepted uh, as being uh, a very good one is to uh, apply heterogeneous acceleration to the problem. And heterogeneous acceleration says uh, basically um, use the right tool for the right job. Uh, and uh, what we have uh, come up with uh, in the industry is this term called uh, domain-specific processing or domain-specific domain architecture, uh, which is a uh, specific architecture for the workload. So for compute, what we've seen is that uh, uh, tasks such as machine learning uh, have been performed by GPUs very effectively in the past. Uh, there have also been uh, ASIC or ASSP solutions for machine learning like the tensor processor and so on. Uh, so that's one example of heterogeneous acceleration. Another one might be uh, video codecs to do video transcoding, uh, and that's an ASSP approach to compute acceleration. Uh, in terms of network acceleration, uh, we've seen the rise of SmartNICs in recent years, and uh, SmartNICs basically perform network offload and acceleration of things like virtual switching, uh, crypto, uh, and so on. And then in terms of storage, uh, we've seen uh, SOCs for storage acceleration, running NVMe protocol processing, doing compression, doing encryption, and so on. Um, today, we'll talk in more detail about the FPGA's role in all three of these areas. Uh, Xilinx has done quite a lot of work on compute acceleration and talked publicly about benchmarks in machine learning where we've demonstrated very high throughput, very low latency. Uh, we've also demonstrated solutions, and we'll talk a little bit more about that today, uh, in terms of storage acceleration uh, and computational storage. Uh, and then uh, the third area is network acceleration. And we'll also talk in more detail today about Xilinx, what Xilinx is doing in the area of network acceleration. Um, the key point here in this slide is that when you talk about domain-specific specific processing, uh, the technology that is applicable to all three of these workload areas is the FPGA. If you think of it in terms of a Venn diagram, the FPGA is in the center of that Venn diagram, and it's really the only technology that is able to do this. Why is the FPGA uniquely positioned to be able to address a wide range of workloads across compute, network, and storage acceleration. Uh, number one, it's very, very flexible. Uh, you can think of the FPGA as a blank slate. 
uh, and you can craft your own domain-specific architecture and layer it on top of the FPGA fabric. Okay, so, so you can really address different workloads very effectively. The other thing is the FPGA is very adaptable. Uh, you can make changes, add functions, uh, improve functionality uh, in terms of uh, compile time uh, and design time, which may be hours or days, where uh, with an ASSP or ASIC-based approach, you have to respin something, and that takes a minimum of a year to two years to do. Uh, a key point also is that uh, FPGAs are dynamically reconfigurable, so you can have your pre-compiled functions ready to go, and then you can swap them in and out, add functionality, change functionality, and that happens on the order of milliseconds. And this is something that's very important in cloud environments uh, where you need to adapt to changing workloads and you need to, to maximize the utilization of your hardware resources. So you can have uh, an accelerator based on an FPGA and you can change the uh, personality, if you will, of that FPGA or even add uh, a blend of different functions depending on how conditions uh, change. And then finally, in terms of performance, FPGAs have demonstrated uh, the ability to perform uh, at very high throughput for a number of different tasks. Uh, they have a lot of on-chip memory uh, to support uh, high bandwidth operations. So they're really good across compute, storage, and network processing. Last year, we, Xilinx introduced the Alveo Accelerator cards. So uh, these are boards that are in standard form factors and they're designed to address compute, storage, and network acceleration. They come in various uh, performance levels, um, and they're dynamically reconfigure, reconfigurable. Uh, however, uh, the Alveo hardware is really just the start. The Alveo hardware is part of a general platform. Let's talk a little bit about the uh, Xilinx acceleration platform. Uh, at the bottom of that platform is the hardware, of course, on top of that hardware, we have an integrated development environment, which people use to create functions, compile them, and run them on the FPGA. Uh, on top of that is a runtime, which allows the functions to be dynamically loaded and reconfigured, uh, and also controlled from the software layer. Uh, and then what's really interesting is that as you go up the stack, uh, we have uh, either from Xilinx or through our partners, uh, sets of libraries and middleware that enable uh, hooking into common open source frameworks like TensorFlow, CAFE for machine learning, or FFmpeg for video transcoding. Uh, and what this does is it really uh, abstracts uh, the underlying, underlying acceleration from the users. So they can be very productive very quickly. They don't have to know anything about the underlying FPGA uh, details uh, or programming of the FPGA itself. And this platform-based approach uh, is really what has uh, enabled uh, us to jumpstart this uh, very robust ecosystem of applications and solutions on top of the Xilinx Alveo Acceleration Platform. And you see just a small sampling here of solutions that uh, we've talked about publicly. Um, you see some of the benchmarks that we've achieved in terms of the acceleration factor running on Alveo compared to a software-based approach. And finally, you see that uh, Alveo allows a very elastic model where you can move applications between uh, the cloud and on-prem. We have uh, cloud-based FPGAs, of course, today. Uh, we call that FPGA as a service. Uh, we have Amazon F1 instances and Nimbix as two examples of that. And this enables developers to develop very rapidly in the cloud. Uh, it enables customers to deploy e either in the cloud or on-prem and move back and forth and have that flexibility. Uh, so this has been a very, very important development in FPGA acceleration technology. Now I want to talk very briefly about a few examples of uh, FPGA ex acceleration. Here's one uh, that does compute acceleration. Uh, and uh, what uh, our partner, Ideticom, has done with their no-load technology is apply acceleration to database, uh, RocksDB specifically, achieving about a 6x uh, throughput advantage over running in pure software. Uh, this, uh, this demo is running in the Xilinx booth today, and I encourage you to stop by and check it out and ask uh, more questions about uh, how it's done. Uh, in terms of storage acceleration, uh, this is very exciting. Uh, we have a partner called Bigstream uh, that has uh, demonstrated Apache Spark acceleration running four times faster 
uh, on uh, this platform versus uh, software. Uh, and the platform itself is the Samsung Smart SSD. Uh, Samsung was up here earlier today talking about this. Um, it's really innovative in the sense that it brings acceleration closer to storage. Uh, so you see on this uh, board there's an FPGA uh, on the PCIe SSD drive along with the flash memory. Uh, the advantage of this, of course, is that you can have the acceleration operating directly on the data without the CPU getting involved. Uh, so time to result is improved, uh, plus you're offloading the CPU from having to move data back and forth, and you're also saving power because you're not moving data around. So this is a great solution that we're very, very excited about. And again, you can see this in the Xilinx booth today. So we've talked about compute, we've talked about storage. The next thing that is very important to offload is network uh, traffic, network processing, and uh, that's where we need network acceleration. Uh, and you see here that the growth in port speeds, uh, these are the port speeds that servers connect to the uh, data center network, have been significantly exceeding the growth in compute, which is limited, of course, by Moore's law. And the network traffic rate directly drives the workload on the CPU. So if you remember that pie chart I showed earlier, uh, what's happening is that network piece is growing uh, more rapidly and overwhelming the CPU, so there's nothing left over for compute or storage. So this needs to be solved. And in recent years, smart NICs have emerged to solve exactly this problem. Uh, the first generation of smart NICs was based primarily on multi-core CPU type technology, SOCs, for instance. Uh, and they were effective at offloading CPUs, but really they just moved the problem from one place to another because ultimately the uh, CPUs in the multi-core SOCs are subject to the same uh, limitations of Moore's law. So as network port speed rates increase, uh, they uh, can't keep up. Uh, in recent years, uh, customers have demonstrated uh, technologies uh, built on top of FPGA, uh, and uh, FPGAs have been widely deployed for network acceleration in hyperscale data centers. Uh, the first generation of FPGA-based solutions uh, use a two-chip approach where the network interface controller chip is still an ASSP, and the smartness is put into the FPGA, okay? We believe uh, the next step is to integrate that network interface controller functionality in with the FPGA. That provides a lot of advantages in terms of uh, area and power and flexibility of moving data back and forth between the NIC function and smart acceleration functions. And this is something that uh, Xilinx is demonstrating today with our partner Sol SolarFlare in our booth uh, that you can see after this presentation. Um, furthermore, uh, if you remember what I said earlier about FPGAs being the only technology that can address all three areas, network, compute, and storage acceleration, uh, you can now start to envision a new generation of smart NICs smart NICs that don't just do network acceleration, but that combine network and storage and compute acceleration. And FPGAs are capable of doing exactly that. So this is the uh, demonstration that uh, you can see today uh, in the Xilinx booth. Our partner, SolarFlare, uh, who is a leader in network interface controller technology, uh, being a leader in uh, financial uh, applications where super high throughput and super low latency is critical. Uh, they've taken their technology and they've integrated that into a Xilinx FPGA using our Xilinx platform approach. Uh, this technology is, very, as I said, high performance. It can uh, perform 100 million packets per second of processing in the uh, receive direction from the network as well as 100 million packets per second in the transmit direction. So that's 200 million packets per second of aggregate throughput, uh, super high throughput, plus uh, this technology is extensible using high level programming languages like P4 or C and C++ uh, so that you can extend the feature set and add those different types of acceleration workloads that I discussed earlier. And this solution comes with Linux and DPDK host drivers. So in summary, uh, FPGAs are great for compute, storage, and networking. Uh, they give you very high performance, basically approaching ASIC ASSP performance, 
but they have the flexibility of a programmable solution. Uh, all FPGA solutions uh, for NIC is a breakthrough. That level of integration uh, enables uh, new types of solutions to be created, which are more robust and rich. And uh, finally, we have a great ecosystem that is developing and continues to increase uh, that uh, allows users to build more complex applications. Um, I'll leave you with this. Please visit the Xilinx booth, uh, A15. It's over there. Uh, you can see the three demos that I outlined in this presentation. And also, uh, don't miss our executive track with Jim Dworkin uh, at 2.40 this afternoon, where he'll talk more about these types of solutions. Thank you very much for your time.